these cars will know a lot about you, your behavior, and we need to make sure also that this data cannot be misused. So Francois, what are intelligent and connected vehicles? This is a type of vehicle which is defined in China as an automated and connected vehicle. In China, they call it ICV and they are working hard on that. And do we have similar products in uh, Europe and in North America? Exactly. We call it differently. In the EU, we have automated car and what we call CITS. So we are thinking about having two types of technologies on board of vehicles, the connectivity and the automation. And also in the US, in the US they are talking about uh, V2X, which is vehicle to whatever communication, and they are also talking about automation. And one of the products, of course, which is under loop or under consideration, is the Google car, for example, showing some progress in terms of automation. So why are these intelligent and connected cars, why are they so important? Well, today, uh, experts like to say that 90% of the accidents are due to mistake from the human being. So we believe that having this type of connectivity and automation on board of vehicle will help us to reduce uh, accidents, fatalities. But we also believe that these technologies are helping us to drive better and there will be most probably some advantage in terms of congestion, traffic, and also in terms of environment protection and CO2 emissions. So these technologies are one of the important things for the automotive sector for the future. So you've mentioned some of the advantages there. What are some of the disadvantages or challenges associated with these vehicles? Well, today we are talking about these vehicles, but they are not completely reality. So we don't know exactly what are the drawbacks at this stage. But we assume that we need to pay attention at some subjects, let's say cybersecurity, this type of cars could be hacked, and also data protection. Uh, these cars will know a lot about you, your behavior, and we need to make sure also that this data cannot be misused. So the vehicles for the market in China, Europe, and the USA actually differ at the moment. So are you expecting this to continue in the future? Well, today, this is right, the vehicles are differing, mostly because of different norms and regulations. But now we are talking about a brand new technology and we have the opportunity to cooperate together. And if we work together on the same thing, we will manage to have the same requirements, the same norms, the same products. And maybe in the future, this will be possible to drive a Chinese car in the EU or in the USA. Well, Francois, thank you so much for coming in today and sharing your insights with us. Thank you very much. That's all for myself and Francois, but for all the latest updates and exclusive market moves, do keep clicking back to Dukascopy TV.